<laughs> one of my favorite to this day. I remember it from watching it then. It cracked me up. And at the time I was uh, dancing, so it made it all the more funny. It's still funny now. Indiana ends up, teenager Indiana ends up somehow roped into dancing in the Russian ballet. And he's, not to give away too much, but he's spying on someone, but he somehow ends up as this Russian dancer. Well, he has to signal his these people that are in the audience and so so he's wearing this spang this sparkly thing like down there and he has to start wiggling his hip oh gosh it is it is hilarious my mom was watching it with me she had never she couldn't remember the show she remembered watching it with me a little bit but she didn't actually remember all the stuff so she's watching the show with me she is laughing to the point of tears she, she's just, she's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's funny, if you ever find, I don't, last I checked, this show wasn't on YouTube, but it could be now. Yeah, look for the one with Russian ballet, and, and it could be somebody just posted that clip on there, and <laughs> it's just, oh, it's all half and a half. And, and a lot of times, it, just, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of episodes that are extremely serious because of the content in it, you know, the the events that he is that Indiana is in very important moments in history. But then there's others where it's just like you can't be serious. <laughs> and and that that Russian ballet one is the same one where he meets Picasso and, and it's just Oh, they had to be cracking up the entire time making that episode. <laughs> it is just hilarious. It is so funny. So there's that one and just, yeah. And one thing I found out a while back was River Phoenix, who was young Indy in the movie, in Last Crusade, he was originally asked to play young Indiana Jones in the TV show, and he turned it down. I guess he was busy with of course, his band and a couple other movies. I, I guess his... He was just busy. He just couldn't do it. So they asked Sean Patrick. But, I, you know, it's kind of... You kind of wonder what the show would be like with River Phoenix. Because I loved him in... Um, Last Crusade. And, and Sean Patrick did a really good job portraying There's also an episode with Harrison Ford. He did make an appearance in, and that one's a good one. That one's a pretty good one. But the show was just, it was so popular. It didn't last very long. As far as they showed a lot of reruns, and so it went from 1992 to 1996. So they were showing reruns for all that time, and I guess they had a couple movies. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I just know that a lot of times when I look f to see how long it ran, it says 92 to 96, but it doesn't seem like it ran that long because I remember seeing the reruns over and over and over again. 
but <laughs> when you watch the films in order, you know, the episodes or whatever, when you watch them in order, you, about the last three or four, you kind of get a sense that they were starting to run out of content. I mean, after the war ends and Indy comes home, it's kind of like, what more can you do? <laughs> the war's over. <laughs> One thing that a friend of mine kept asking, he kept wanting to borrow my box set and it's like, this is one box set that nobody's gonna touch. <laughs> I will not know. <laughs> no. But he kept asking me, he was like, well, do they say anything about Marion and Indiana? He says, I want to know what happened with those two. And it's like, they, no, they don't, sorry, but no. <laughs> Because Indiana was a teenager then, and if you listen to the movie in Raiders of the Lost Ark, she says, I learned to hate you in the last 10 years, so obviously whatever happened was in the 1920s. So, but, but like I was saying, the show was, it, it, it took off. There were trading cards. Oh, I wanted those trading cards. And you, you can find trading cards, you know, like in collector places and stuff. And But they had... So they had the trading cards, and what you could do is you could buy the trading card. They had the, the boxed trading card where you could buy all of them with these 3D glasses. And the 3D glasses never worked. <laughs> you know, the old 3D glasses where it was like the red and the blue. Not like what 3D glasses are now. So, but what they would do is you'd put them on and I guess that they would show like special treasure maps and stuff and but it never showed you anything. <laughs> I had a friend he said that he he bought all of them and you know one of those boxes and uh, he said that he was so excited he was like 11 years old and he he was really excited because he got this young Indiana Jones, all the trading cards, and he said, well, it was cool that I have the trading cards, but I can't really, I mean, I can look at them, and that's about it. He says they're, he says they're worth a lot of money now, of course, but <laughs> he says when you're 11 years old and you think that these 3D glasses are actually going to do, <laughs> you kind of feel like Ralphie when he gets that decoder pin. <laughs> But there were, oh, the books. I have one of the books. And the one that everyone remembers is Curse of the Ruby Cross. Now they had <laughs> Young Indiana Jones, the, the book series touched on so many different things in history. Because Indiana Jones, I don't know how I know this, but I know this. Indiana Jones was born in, in 1899. So... <laughs> So they had all these books, like they had one where young Indy survived the Titanic. So he, there's a, a young Indiana Jones book where he's on the Titanic. There's an, I mean, he's in the jungle, he's in New Orleans. There was like a, a voodoo something that he had to, the curse of the voodoo something. And there's like 60 young Indiana Jones books. And I'm probably exaggerating on that, but it seemed like it. I got one. <laughs> I'd like to get the other ones. But... The Curse of the Ruby Cross, he was staying... The, I, I've read the book so much that I remember it. But it, it, it was the most popular book. And you would think that it was the, the Titanic one would be. Because you have to understand that in the 80s, that was when Titanic was found. So there were a lot of books, fiction or, you know, more photos showing the memorabilia from Titanic. <laughs> I think that's 
pretty much when those diaries from kids started popping up, the, the books that are the diary from the kid, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you actually thought that those kids actually were, and they were just fictional. Those kids didn't exist. <laughs> but we thought they did. 